Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing the concept of dysplasia. Now, this is a very important basic topic you need to understand because it's going to be one of the building blocks of your understanding when it comes to medicine. So with that being said, let's discuss dysplasia by first discussing cellular adaptations. Now, overall, our cells and our body is currently is under a lot of stress because of the environment that it's in. One example is the stomach lining because stomach lining is constantly being eroded due to being exposed to hydrochloric acid. Now, organs have developed in a way to maintain homeostasis. They're generally in a state of homeostasis because they're able to combat the stress that they're placed upon. They're able to change. And the changes that occur are based off of the type and severity of the stress that the organ is placed upon. And generally speaking, an increase in stress is going to lead to the growth of an organ occurring. Occurring. The growth, I'm going to write this right here so for your understanding, the growth of an organ is a compensatory, compensatory mechanism. Okay. Now, when it comes to growth adaptations, we have two main types. They are hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Both of these have been discussed in a previous lecture series, which I highly recommend you go and uh, you watch. But when it comes to homeostasis, if you have growth occurring in size, you also have to have something that's going to decrease the growth, right? Some opposite or some anti antithesis way of uh, combating growth adaptations. That would be atrophy. Atrophy allows for homeostasis of organ growth to occur. It's one way our bodies go back into normal state. But if that is just one way going back to normal state, it's with the assumption that the stress that is being placed upon the organ is gone. What happens when the stress doesn't go away? What happens if the stress stays present? Well, our organs can also change the type of cells they have by going through a mechanism called metaplasia. In metaplasia, you are changing the type of cell. So this is a change in the basic structure or the basic type of cells that are in that organ. Now, the reason why metaplasia is dangerous, and we discussed this in another lecture where we discussed metaplasia, go check that video out. But the reason why metaplasia is dangerous is because with constant metaplasia, you can get dysplasia. And dysplasia is a pathologic change that can actually lead to cancer. That's why we are so concerned when we're talking about metaplasia and dysplasia, because if you do not correct these mechanisms, if you do not correct metaplasia or dysplasia, this can lead to the dreaded C word, cancer. And when it leads to cancer, you know you're in a less than ideal situation. Um, so yeah, that's why we are going to be discussing dysplasia more. So dysplasia is an abnormal growth or development of cells. This is different than metaplasia because in metaplasia, I'm going to write this on the side, metaplasia is the change in cell type in response, that says response guys, in response to stress. Okay, dysplasia is an abnormal growth or development of cells that shouldn't be happening. Usually, this is because of disordered cell growth happening. And what happens is that the abnormal growth is a proliferation of the precancerous cells. That's why we are so concerned with dysplasia. If left untreated, it will go to the dreaded C word, cancer. Oh, no. Okay, so... How does this happen? Usually, dysplasia occurs because of long-standing hyperplasia or metaplasia. That's why hyperplasia and metaplasia are dangerous because essentially it has to do with the stress. The stress is the biggest contributing factor to dysplasia really occurring. If you are constantly placing a lot of stress upon an organ, that organ has to compensate or else that organ will die, which your body does not want to happen. So we go through a process called hyperplasia first to combat the initial amount of stress. And if hyperplasia is not effective or if our body deems it essential to change the cell type, we will also go through a process called metaplasia. Now, dysplasia is actually reversible for the most part, right? If you remove the stress, you can get rid of the dysplasia that's occurring. One example of this is Barrett's esophagus. Barrett's esophagus occurs because of long-standing GERD. If you do not remove the acidic reflux that's happening in the esophagus, you will develop esophageal carcinoma. 
But if you reverse that, if you treat the GERD, if you give them PPIs, if you give them uh, um, um, acid, antacids and everything, and if you reverse GERD, you can actually regress Barrett's esophagus to the normal esophageal lining. But if you do not regress, if you do not remove that stress, it can progress to carcinoma. And carcinoma is the dangerous part. That is what we are afraid of. It is irreversible. You cannot go backwards. This is the, for all intent purposes for this lecture, is the cancer we are so afraid of. And I'm going to write cancer multiple times because I want you to understand that the concept of dysplasia, metaplasia, is highly, highly associated with the development of cancer. That's why we treat it so aggressively in the clinical setting. And that's why you need to know it for your board examinations. One example, one classical example of dysplasia that you need to know is the example of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, aka CINs. Okay, so let's talk about cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, or CINs, to give you a better understanding of what dysplasia really looks like so it can get a little solidified in your mind. So, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia is a precancerous condition. It's a precancerous condition. This is not cancer. I want to write that for you guys so you understand. This is a dysplastic condition. Dysplasia. Okay. And in this condition, you have abnormal cell growth on the surface of the cervix, meaning the surface of the cervix is not growing the way it should. So the best way I can explain this to you is by talking about the classifications. CIN can be classified into three main categories. CIA, CIN1, CIN2, and CIN3. And as you guessed it, the larger the number, the worse the outcome and the more progressed the disease has become. And essentially, CIN1 is also known as low-grade neoplasia. It's a dysplastic condition where about one-third of the thickness of the epithelium has changed from one cell type to a different cell type, okay? And then CIN2 encompasses about two-thirds, and then CIN3 encompasses more than two-thirds. Not the full thickness, but at least more than two-thirds. And this example can be best seen by this image right here. So let's look at the normal... Uh, cervical epithelial lining. As you can see, you have the stratified squamous, and then you have the rest of the cells, and you have simple columnar down here. Essentially, in CIN1, you start seeing dysplastic cells in one-third. This is one-third, this is two-thirds, and that's three-thirds. So right here, you start seeing the generation of the dysplastic cells. CIN2, these cells are growing. They start hitting the around two-thirds mark, and then CIN3 is more than two-thirds, almost full thickness, and then that is when we start looking at invasive carcinoma. If you do not reverse CIN2 and 3, if you do not catch it early, it will progress to invasive carcinoma, which is a cancerous lesion. We already know that, and we don't want that to happen. As you can see, it is actually invading right here through the basement layer that it should not be doing. Once it invades, it is a very, very dangerous uh, condition. It's something that you need to treat very aggressively. Otherwise, the patient will pass away from this cancer. But this is just one example of a dysplastic condition. There are so many more that we're going to be discussing that you're going to be seeing throughout the course that you're going to be just under, you just have to have a better understanding in order to realize why those conditions are so dangerous. It really goes down to the dysplasia, neoplasia, or dysplasia carcinoma cascade. If you understand this, you are going to understand dysplasia really well. So just to recap, dysplasia is just an abnormal growth or development of cells that are usually precancerous and arise from long-standing hyperplasia or metaplasia due to stress. If you remove that stress, if you remove the stressor that's being placed upon the body, you will reverse dysplasia. If you do not, if you do not, you will progress to cancer. And once you progress to cancer, it is irreversible. Okay. One example of this is cervical epithelial neoplasia, CINs. CINs are all reversible. The further they get, the harder it is to reverse them. That is one caveat you need to remember, right? The further you are getting to cancer, the harder it is going to be to reverse it back to normal physiologic state, but still reversible technically. Once you progress to cancer, you're now dealing with a cancerous lesion, 
not a precancerous lesion. And that's why CAN is so important. I hope you found this video educational and helpful. If you did, consider subscribing to our channel because your support really means a lot to us. If you like this content and you want to see more content like this, go to our website at www.madmedicine.org where you can find more educational content for your exam prep free of charge. Thank you.